another week overtaking lane. We've got to go shoot another car, yep. do a bit more filming. Uh, we're going to bring something a little bit different today, aren't we? We certainly are. Yeah, we've got some hot rod action. Yep. Yeah, pretty excited. So, uh, we're going for a cruise right now in the uh, skyline, headed up to uh, PJR, meet them up there. Yep, we certainly are. And then um, go do a bit of filming. So, uh, yeah, look, I hope you enjoy this week. And if you like what you see, hit like, subscribe, jump on all the socials, do all those things. It helps us out. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, let's go look at the car, right? Huh? Yeah, let's reckon? do it. Let's cruise. Yep, let's go. Justin, thanks for coming along today. The 34 forward. Now, I've just gone for my first ever run in a hot rod, actually, to be to be honest. I've, I've not been uh, out in one, looked at many, uh, but never been in one. And pretty impressed with how this thing drives. Right? Yeah, it's pretty cruisy. It's um, a little different. I guess they're slightly commercial in their suspensions, but um, you certainly cop a fair decent number of looks in them and a, a total different feel. No, uh, yeah, so yeah, they're, they're awesome. We did do a detour through Bunnings there at one point. There was uh, plenty of people looking in there, wasn't there? Well, I knew where there'd be uh, an audience for us, so <laughs> I figured we had a whole line-up of, uh, of the Bunnings people, maybe 20, 30 waiting to get in, so we entertained them for a couple of seconds. So, they yeah. enjoyed it. They yeah, did. as did we. Yeah, now, as did we. This is uh, an exceptional-looking car as well. Now, I've been thinking under it, I've been in it, I've been looking all over it. Um, it is faultless from what I see. I, I guess every owner has the little things that you might know of, but I certainly don't see of any. Um, but tell us where, where did it start? Where did this car start? Well basically I wanted a hot rod for a while um, 
A guy called Peter Gratz has got a few of them. Uh, he was in the muscle cars and uh, door slammers uh, in the early days when I got to know him. And um, I was admiring his hot rods. It wasn't just the fact of being a hot rod, it was the fact of all the different things you can do that you can't do on a normal street car or muscle car. Now, to drive around without a hood, to have a supercharger, mm -hmm. um, it, it's just fantastic. So he helped me to look around trying to find something and I noted a vehicle he had built that was lovely. It was exactly what I wanted. The manufacturer was only going to build 20 and they'd already sold 19 and they were keeping the last one. So with Pete's help, he uh, convinced them to sell me the last one. Uh, but I was given one condition and I wasn't allowed to make my car look like his. <laughs> yeah. um, Pete's really good. He's all about engine um, uh, and function. Uh, I wanted to do something that basically suited all the things I wanted, but I wanted some muscle car features in it as well, mm -hmm. not just hot rod. Um, a guy, uh, Craig from East Coast, beg your pardon, East Coast Race Cars, uh, was awesome. Um, he gave me a lot of guidance, and I said no to some things. Uh, he said no to some things, but this was the end result. Uh, I got what I wanted, uh, I, and I wanted everything to be finished nicely. Uh, he did things like air cleaner that took him nearly a week to make, but I didn't want to pull up next to somebody else that had bought one from just down the road. So, yeah, yeah it's, it was a labour of love, more so from Craig than me, but a lot of ideas came from my mind. Um, it wasn't his style of car. He likes more the standard style of vehicle with a few options. As we were building it, he'd shake his head quite a few times. When he finished it, he gave me the, the biggest compliment by saying that he really liked the finished product. Mm. And he's an honest guy, and he really loved the finished product. So that's how it came about. Well, if we start at the, at the front, well, let's start with the engine at the front. Let's go, go straight to the engine, because there's a fair bit of engine there. Yeah, it's um, 392 yep. um, Hemi, uh, with an 871 on it. That basically came from Peter Gratz again, I mentioned his name again. He had built this engine, uh, when the laws changed that you could go to a bigger engine, that was an opportunity for me to uh, take it and put it into my car. It's probably a bit more horsepower than I would have gone for. It's probably a lot more engine than I might have gone for. But I am so pleased that I did. I'm and pleased. He had actually built this for himself, this engine that, originally? That's correct. Yeah, he had built it and it was sitting in his 34 um, three window. Yep. And only hours before, and I really mean that, hours before his start-up, uh, he realised that the law had changed and he just pulled it out and put it on the ground. <laughs> and I said, because it's too little for him. Yeah. It's too small for him. He, he likes 1,000, 1,500 horsepower. This is probably 600. Yep. Um, but in something that weighs a little bit more than a plastic bucket, um, it's more than adequate, as you felt. Yes. Um, so uh, I, I managed to to have him part with that. He, he gave me a, a price for it and said that's about what it owed him. When we pulled out the invoices, we both fell over um, and that price rapidly changed. But he, ex, you know, an extremely good price, but I wouldn't put anything else in there. It's, it's perfect. And it's been bulletproof? Haven't changed spark plugs, haven't reset the carbs, haven't done a thing. Turn the key, fires up every time, like the whole car. I haven't had a single issue with the whole car. So you think if, if you do it right that first time, it comes back to... Look, I think if someone does it right, I think if I did it, it probably wouldn't have been done right the first time. <laughs> I like to tinker. Yep. Um, uh, if, if something breaks, I know how to fix it. Uh, this guy, Craig, he really puts things together, pulls it apart, and every nut and bolt has to have either Loctite or some form of, of, um, of product on it. Uh, he knows what he's doing. I would watch him and think, I could have done that a bit quicker it would have probably fallen off if I had. Yeah. So uh, it's a real testament to, to someone who knows what he's doing. Okay. Now, uh, what about the suspension? you know much what, we, what you've ended up running here? Well, suspension-wise, it's coil overs front and rear, so we can adjust it up and down. Uh, I chose to put a slightly heavier spring in the rear by another 100 pound, um, against the wishes of most, but that allows me to sit it a little bit lower without the guard scraping and tyres giving me issues. Um, so that's, that's made the ride slightly harsher. I can lift it an inch front and rear and that'll change it totally. Yep. So um, as far as that goes, yeah, the, the front end is a, a front end that you just buy readily uh, from South Australia. Um, we, we had it all fitted, but then Craig found it. He wasn't happy with the way it was done. The rear is a, a full-length suspension. 
Uh, again, all done up by Craig. So if you plant the foot, it's less likely to spin the wheels. It's just going to hook up and go. Yeah. No, that's that's what, exactly what you want. I, yeah. I don't think you want to get too sideways in this thing. No, it's the steering's pretty heavy. I wanted to put power steering in it. Um, and then my face went really red after I got slapped a few times and told I wasn't allowed to. <laughs> um, so the steering is relatively heavy, but n not impossible. So uh, I, th I mentioned to you in the car before, if I was to get under it and it got a bit crossed up, I probably don't have the, the uh, agility and speed that I had when I was in my 20s or 30s. So it's really the nut behind the wheel that would be the thing that would cause you know, the most yeah. amount of worry. So uh, it, it'll get crossed up, it'll do the wrong thing, but I'm just not gonna do that. Right. And then we go back to the gearbox, Turbo 700. Yeah, Turbo 7, I bought that from uh, um, America. Uh, I was buying a lot of stuff out of the States at the time. And uh, when we fitted it, it lasted really basically around the block. Um, and then it wasn't working. Mm. So we gave it to Russell's Automatics down here on the Gold Coast. We pulled the box and they went through it, found a few issues, put it back in. Um, then I think it was the converter that might have played up. So it had to come out two more times but now it doesn't miss a beat. Uh, they were awesome, they didn't charge, they just got stuck in. Pulling the box in and out of this without scratching anything underneath yeah. uh, is a monumental task, uh, which they haven't scratched. I've looked, uh, they haven't scratched anything, so. And, and no, I just had a look under there as well. It's uh, immaculate underneath this car as well. Look, I never really wanted it to be show car material. It was always going to be a drive car. There's a lot of things that that um, Craig had said, look, we can polish this and we can pop. I said, no, look, let's just keep it drive car-ish. But it, it, the car demands to have certain things done to make it look right. Um, underneath in areas, we've put aluminium strips to stop the, the stones from chipping and marking. There's a lot of finer details that Craig's done that I hadn't even thought of. And other people see my car and say, wow, well, that's nice. And they see a few things. And each time they see it, they see more. I'm still seeing more. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and, and I, I mean, I was a part of the build. I was there four or five times a week. I was a part of the build. Um, I got it to an initial stage. I gave it to Craig. And had I continued doing it myself, you wouldn't even be interested in talking to me right now. Because <laughs> th this engine, we, we spoke of the engine, it's been moved back, I think, it's seven or eight inches. Right. Now, that means that we've had to totally remake the firewall. But that takes seven or eight inches away from my foot area yeah which makes things a bit cramped luckily i have short legs long body so that works fine for me so yeah there's a lot of things that craig said if you want this thing to look right this is what we need to do and i umdenard over a lot of things mm. and everything he said i'm so glad i did oh, that's good and then the big difference there when we're talking still on the uh, back to the gearbox there is the shifter yeah yeah well the, the shifter was interesting because I wanted a uh, I wanted a paddle shifter for one of my other cars, and I was looking for that many years before I even bought this. And I got onto a manufacturer, and they came up with a price. So I sent my money to I beg, I beg your pardon. I, I made the order, and some two years later, I was still waiting, mm. uh, but I hadn't paid yet. And I had just started building the hot rod. And they got on to me and said, look, we've sent you the shifter. And I said, well, I haven't paid you. They said, look, after two years, we're not going to charge you. Huh. So they sent it out and I told Craig, I want to put the pedal shifter in the hot rod. He said, we don't do that in hot rods. <laughs> I said, good, then let's do it. Um, so that was, that was a lot of our conversations. Um, and the, the pedal shift, it's great. I, I, I love it. It works to perfection. It has its own little box that sits in the glove box. Um, when it's shut, it's all, it, you, you don't even realise, does it? No, no. It's almost an anti-theft device. You know, unless you open the glove box, it's going nowhere. <laughs> um, it only operates... Um, the, the paddle only operates the four forward gears, yep. uh, up and down. Um, it doesn't uh, put it into park or, or neutral like some other brands do, and I wasn't aware of that at the time, but it's caused me no grief at all. Uh, and the That's paddles perfect. actually use the power from the horn button yep. to power it and then... Uh, I guess it's Wi-Fi, Blue or not Bluetooth, Bluetooth, Bluetooth pardon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Bluetooth's over to the little box. Yep. So if this were to play up, you've always got the box, which is hardwired into the unit. Uh, that unit has got that many wires coming out of it because it's made to go into like late model Commodores and things like that as well, so you can just plug and play. Um, but yeah, it's up and running, hasn't given me any grief. Um, only the fact that I've tried to change gears and 
figured it was broken, but I didn't have my foot on the brake. So it's, it really is a case of foot on the brake before you move anywhere, uh, which is like a late model car. So yeah, you I, get used to I, it. I, I like yeah. that, yeah. Now, also, you, you mentioned the, the foot room and stuff there. That you've done a bit with the steering column. It doesn't just go straight down through your pedals. Yeah. Um, that's all like a chain drive. Yeah, basically, um, the, the, because I've come back, I've given myself less foot room. Um, and by the time you put the steering column down where it's supposed to go, I would have to take my shoes off and go barefoot using both feet to drive. Not the end of the world, but didn't want to do that. So then I looked into the chain drive, so instead of the steering column going down at an angle, it goes straight to the top of the firewall, through a chain drive and out the front. So we bought uh, a unit from America, or I did. I sourced it and bought it. We brought it over, we pulled it apart, we um, gave it to the Hot Rod Association to test the destruction. Um, they couldn't destroy it. It's really only a top and bottom um, uh, gear from a small block Chev, or sorry, uh, the, the two bottom gears, and a single chain. Um, we fitted all up and unfortunately it got knocked back on the second inspection because they wanted a double chain. Mm. Luckily enough there was a fellow in Adelaide who used to make these but stopped doing it and he had one left on his shelf which he wanted to keep to show people and I said why? Yeah. I said sell it to me. <laughs> yeah. So he yeah, sold it to one. me. Um, I've shown a lot of other people and he's now gone back into production. Oh. So that now has the chain uh, driving the steering now so that I've got plenty of room for pedals. Yep. Uh, then to the left of the pedals I've got what looks like your high beam, low beam dipper switch with a with a, mm -hmm. a little pad over it, but it's not, that's just a foot rest for me. Ah, okay. um, so so I, I've got somewhere to relax because my little short legs, mm -hmm. I don't want to put them against the firewall because it's all made of, of aluminium, I don't want to mark it and scratch it. Yep. Uh, done the same thing on the passenger side of giving them a special area just to put their feet and the like. So That's good, I did have my feet there, I hope that was a Yeah, nice no, I, I wasn't angry, was right. <laughs> it, it, it was your high heels I was worried about. So, yeah, but no, no well, They weren't meant to see that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Shh. secrets. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right, and, and diff, is it a nine inch in there? Well, it is, yes, yeah, a nine inch standard, but everything's aftermarket. Now, we bought a sheet metal, um, I can't remember now, competition, engineering, sheet metal rear end, um, put floaters into it. Um, uh, I think, yeah, 35 spline. So, look, we've done it all right. Mm -hmm. um, again, not had an issue, touch wood. Um, you know, really pleased with the gearing that we chose. Uh, being a turbo 700, it means we can you know, cruise out in the highway sitting on, on about 2,000 revs, and the engine just loves it, just purrs along like a kid. And this runs down the M1 at 110. Oh it. yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's not an issue to drive. It's just me checking all the gauges. You know, like, I'm a bit like a magpie moving my head around, watching everything all the time. <laughs> uh, the gauges were kind of cool because I, I just bought normal autometer, but I, uh, I I used to be in the industry, uh, so I know products as they're coming out. And um, I, kind of a silly thing, I once took all my gauges and my dash to an electrician and said, "Can you wire this up for me?" And he, he had it for about a week, and then I went back and saw him. He, I said, have you done it? He goes, oh, I'm not going to do it. I said, too hard? He goes, embarrassingly too easy, mate. It all just, they all plug from one to the next. Oh. Um, he said, so me, you, you don't need me to do that. Um, so yes, what they actually do is, uh, if the car were to get hot, the gauge changes colour from, I've got white now, to red and starts to right. flash. If it continues getting hot, then they all start flashing red. Okay, so that's cool. it, it's pretty idiot proof, which is what sometimes we need at yeah. my age. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that. I can change the colours on the fly. I can change exactly where rev limiters come in on the fly on the front of the gauge. So I, I was pretty happy with, with that with uh, the autometer. Yeah. Um, I contemplated all digital stuff and all different things and um, actually got something better than what I wanted that still looks old school. It looks really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's When they lit up, I uh, was looking at that yeah. before. So. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, just the rubber on there as well. There's a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's um, yeah, 7.5 on the on the front and 15.5 on the rear. Uh, we went through a little bit of trouble getting it passed because there are rules and regulations, and that would look like it wasn't going to be correct. But um, I managed Bob Jane Team Mode at Mermaid Beach for she was I think it was about five six years, and I know that the manufacturer puts an advertised size on the tyre, but there is a true when fitted to a designated rim size of tyre. Yes. So I got into the manufacturer before I bought them and my rears are actually 14.8 yep. and the front is 7.5. Uh, I put this to the Hot Rod Association, uh, I had to give them all the paperwork to back it up uh, and it got passed. Now there were some questions towards the end mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, but it's all been approved to the degree that they even have engraved it on my blue plate. Um, so there's no questions whatsoever. So that, that pleased me. So there's no issues going forward? No, and, and look, I would have had to have changed the guards and the tyres, and that doesn't sound like a big job, but they're all handmade. Uh, the guards are hand, handmade, hand rolled, yeah. and all the bracketry, and, and I'm so glad that they realised that you know, I did my homework first. So, yeah, yeah. so the tyres are fine. Oh, perfect. Well, there's a fair bit about this car already, and, and we could just keep going. I really could, and, and we're, I've been chatting all morning, so, um, but. We might we may be losing some people. They might be getting sick of us by now. Yeah, but you've got another car that we're going to have a chat about as well. Yeah. And I always like to know a little bit about yourself and 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 what your background in cars is and where it came from. And I think we'll ask that in the next one. Yeah, well, that'd and be great. I, I'd got a lot to make mention. Only one last thing: that colour was my biggest oh, we didn't problem. Talk about the paint. Well, yes. I, I, I had two issues: colour of the paint, colour of the interior. Uh, the colour of the paint ended up just. Um, uh, it's, it's galaxy grey, uh, nothing special about it, but the, but the size of chip that I, I it's chose... It's metallic in it, right? Yes, it, it, it's a large metallic, it's almost like a boat, I was worried at first. Um, <laughs> my nephew uh, painted that, um, oh. uh, he's from Itchwich, uh, Itchwich Paint and Panel. I was say, he must do it for a trade, because that's an exceptional Look, job. he does it for a trade, but he's never done a hot rod, he's never done a show car. Um, and he really went um, the extra mile with this. Mm. And what he's done with the chassis is fantastic. And the paint, uh, we took it to a show down in Yamba, um, it got top 10 and top paint. So he deserves recognition for that. Definitely. Um, and the interior was originally orange. Uh, we then realised we didn't like the orange, it marked too easily. So we removed, we removed it, we were replacing it with the red. Um, and where we had it, uh, a local guy, very, very good, his whole business burnt down. We lost a lot and we had to scramble to get another upholsterer to do this, which I'm still happy with the job. I'm just sad to have lost the other interior and, and all the other bits and pieces that were going into it. But yeah, that's, a, that's a, an unusual situation. Yeah, yeah. Something like that to happen, isn't it? Sad but true. But you know what? The end result has ended up perfect. Um, and I've said beforehand, I often sit down and think, what can I do to it now? And there's nothing really I want to do. I, I can't really think of anything I want to do to it. I'm happy with the finished product. Definitely quite surprised at how it does change colour because we were not long ago outside in the sun and we were talking about it out there and it's sort of maybe a, a, a touch of a bronzy yep. shade to yep, it and you were great. talking about how it, it even looks gold in certain lights and now Absolutely. under in here under this light it's it is very silver again so like it, it, it does completely change. Yeah, I never wanted something that was going to flip. I was really um, adamant about that mm. but it, it doesn't actually flip it just changes colors in certain lights and the whole car is that color yeah. so at least you're not walking from one direction or the other and, and you're getting the flip I didn't really want that yes uh, not in this car anyway so uh, no, very pleased with it uh, yeah the initial hit when we saw the gold in pictures uh, I was almost in tears thinking this is not right uh, walk outside and hang on now it's a bright silver it's like <laughs> so yeah it was a shock to the system but a pleasant one so yeah it is very good yeah, All thank right. you. well uh, this is this is exceptional and it's hard to hard to beat this um, and I, I don't think we will beat this we, we, I think we've started with the best oh, thank you. Um, but you know just in, out of your own cars we'll, we've got to come back next week and have a chat uh, about yeah, uh, the SS yeah. and uh, see what's going on there so perfect um, we'll come back and we'll well, it might be next week for these guys, but it probably might be. I you know, realise that. Yeah, it yeah maybe five minutes for us. Exactly. So. TV magic, hey? Yeah, one can of Coke and we'll be back into it. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.